Hi, everyone. Now that we've talked about the role of the financial uh, sector in the circular flow diagram, I just want to talk a little bit about the government. Now, we all think of the government as, you know, the United States government and state governments, and that's a pretty good way to start thinking about it. And in the circular flow diagram, they really have two important roles, and that is they raise revenue through taxation, and then they go ahead and spend. So let's first talk a little bit about the spending. Well, the government actually has two types of spending. So if you're reading along in the chapter, you know that one type of spending the government does is it purchases goods and services, and I'll just call that G because it's government spending on goods and services. Right? So that's when the government goes out and directly buys a good or a service. Now this will be spending by the government on things like roads, bridges, tanks, teachers, etc. And the reason why we call it government spending on goods and services is in exchange for the government's money, it's getting a good or service in exchange for it. Right? So it's just like you walk into a store, you buy clothes, you're getting a good or service in exchange for that. We call that spending or consumption expenditures. When the government goes ahead and gets a good or service in exchange for its spending, we go ahead and call that government spending, which in the chapter we abbreviate as a G. Okay? So that's one type of spending that households go with, or that the government goes ahead and does. The other type of spending, which is of growing importance over time, is when the government simply goes ahead and makes what we call transfer payments to households. Transfers. And technically, it also makes transfer payments to some firms. Transfers. Okay? Now, and we abbreviate that TR in the textbook. Right? So now, transfer payments are spending by the government where, by definition, they do not get a good or service in exchange for it. So classic ones would be on unemployment insurance. If you get unemployment insurance, then you're getting payments from the government um, because you meet certain criteria, one of which is you're not employed. And if you're not employed, by definition, you're not producing a good or service. Other common forms of transfer payments would be welfare payments, uh, social security payments, Medicare payments, these would all be payments that the government is making. It's not getting a good or service in exchange for them. The spending is occurring simply because the individuals meet certain criteria. That's it. Okay. And on the firm side, the firm uh, government um, subsidizes various types of activities. So there's agriculture, there's a lot of agricultural subsidies out there. There might be uh, subsidies out there for certain preferred technologies, sort of like green technology uh, that are uh, more environmentally friendly. The government sometimes um, provides transfer payments to encourage those. And it's called a transfer payment in that case because the government isn't getting the good or service in exchange for it. It's simply providing money to the corporation that's engaging in a certain activity. And the government, At the end of that transaction, the government doesn't own the technology. It's simply a, f a way for the government to encourage the technology's development. Now, so the government makes two types of spending. It purchases goods and services and transfer payments to households and firms. Now, where does the government get the revenue to go ahead and do this? Well, two different ways. First are taxes. So the government might get tax revenue from firms through the corporate income tax. And it also might get tax revenue from households through personal income taxes, payroll taxes, those are Social Security and Medicare taxes. Uh, there are certain consumption taxes or, or sales taxes. These aren't very common at the federal level. We're more familiar with this with state sales taxes. But there are some federal sales taxes, for example, on the sale of gasoline and some other, um, and there's some other minor sources of taxes. In addition, if all the tax revenue that the government is bringing in is not enough to go ahead uh, and finance all the payments or all the transfer payments they're making and all the government expenditures they're making, then the other place that the government can go ahead and tap um, its funds is from the financial market. So the government might get loans from financial markets. So if you've heard people talk about the United States is running a budget deficit, well, that's just a fancy way of saying the government's taxes are not enough to pay for all of the spending on transfer programs and goods and services. As a result, the only way the government can go ahead and pay for those uh, 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 transfer payments and government spending is to obtain, obtain loans in the financial sector. All right. So, and that means ultimately those loans are financed by the savings of some households out there. 
whether they're households in the United States, and we really s still don't have the rest of the world in here, but technically the savings could be from other countries. So the big uh, three countries that the United States borrows from are China, Japan, and Great Britain. So it could be households in those countries that are ultimately funding um, the government spending as well. All right, well, that's uh, just a brief breakdown of the government's role. In the next, in the next short little video, we'll go ahead and talk about um, fiscal policy.